it's becoming very clear that ward is just one of the most busted mechanics of recent magic the gathering it's not necessarily the whole delve shenanigan it's not storm it's not anything that crazy but ward has become functional hexproof but one that feels worse it's like you're given the choice but you're not able to take it kind of not really along the ideas of mana leak versus counterspell where a counterspell just says hard no but mana leak kind of feels bad in a certain way because you're given the choice to pay for it and you always think could i have played around this could i have just played a two cost spell at five mana and played around this mana leak and resolve things that way it kind of has that feel bad aspect to it and that's why i kind of wanted to bring it up today i think ward has really changed our understanding of magic these days and it's been this kind of tuning dial that the design team has implemented in certain creatures to provide power to the higher level creatures to give them a form of protection but also provide optionality right like you do want ways to destroy creatures and there's been different types of ward it doesn't necessarily have to be a mana cost it could be losing life it could be sacrificing a permanent but that's what i again wanted to talk about today why this has become a problem and where we should kind of take it from here and this video is inspired recently by a video by the good morning magic team and also a video done recently by pleasant kenobi just kind of elaborating on this topic but i think there's some points to really understand here as to the main cards that showcase ward and why it is a problem through the lens of those cards so mainly i want to start off with voha and that, that's been the most recent discussion. Boha Jaws of the Conclave being a 5-5 with Ward 3, it functionally has hexproof in the sense that, well, in an EDH setting, you're playing more board wipes. So there is a bit of a soft filter for things like that. There are more overall board wipes because single target removal is good and you should be playing it in your EDH decks. But it's important to note that Voha having that Ward 3 just essentially makes every removal spell cost three more. And Path to Exile at four mana is a lot worse. Lightning Bolt at four mana is a lot worse, although you would require multiple sources of bolts which i'm going to touch on from the perspective of red versus ward but voha is kind of this exemplification of it a card that really runs away with the game if it's allowed to untap now without a board wipe really being present against it it is going to be able to untap and that's one of the tuning dials added to this creature on purpose you want big impactful creatures you want your commanders to be able to survive a rotation too many commanders are designed these days where you say oh if i was able to untap with this then i go off then i win and there must answer cards well voha is also a must answer card although being in red and green you have multiple ways to create a, a, a haste effect you have concordant crossroads and i mean don't get me started with the numerous amount of ways in red my personal favorite is putting anger into the graveyard but that's me as a red player but there are ways to enable this card but how do you remove it in a constructed environment now voha isn't really played in in the whole legacy sphere and the modern sphere wherever it's legal it's not necessarily being cheated out that way because when it enters the battlefield you know that effect where you draw and buff your creatures requires elves and wolves so it's not this universal effect that you have with other creatures although if it was it would actually be a relatively decent sneak attack target Honestly, it would be, but you'd need a whole board to establish it, which is why you don't really want to be sneak attacking this. But this mechanic, if it wasn't constructed, would be further highlighted by the fact that it affects red the most. Now, red is the type of color that works with damage based removal. Now, Pat to XL, I was mentioning that four is pretty bad, but ultimately, it is an XL effect. It does ultimately solve the problem of the creature, right? You remove it, but these days it feels like, especially with the onset of Modern Horizons 3, the XL zone is becoming more and more of a zone where things enter more actively, and especially in the commander environment where if your commander was to enter XL, you could just put it in the command zone. It just feels like the exile zone just becomes less and less of this be all end all of a zone. So it enters exile with path to exile, but with a card like Lightning Bolt, where if you pointed to Lightning Bolt at Voha, you'd be paying a total of eight mana just to be able to kill Voha with two Lightning Bolt effects. And that's really what's the problem with red against war, where it really shuts off this one color and its access to destroying creatures with ward. You find this downside exists innately in other sources of removal anyway. So green primarily is there for destroying enchantments and artifacts. If it destroys a creature, it will replace it with something. So some type of, you know, destroy a creature, you get a 3-3 beast or in black, it's removal, but at a cost or a downside you know destroying a non-black creature destroying a creature and then losing life equals to its power 
Now, these downsides are already built, but mana cost is the biggest downside that you can have, right? If things cost more, they become more unplayable. A card costing one versus the same card costing two is double the cost. The astronomical difference is insane, and zero versus one is an infinitesimal type of difference between those but mana cost is not really what i'm here to talk about really just that ward presents a problem in constructed environments because it restricts certain colors now the next aspect of it is that amidst just various other cards that are playable it provides as i was mentioning this tuning dial and is kind of the reason why certain cards are good i'm thinking of a card like roaming throne where it is such a powerful commander card. It is very played, a rather expensive card for what it's worth being a recent print, but really is only good because of its War 2. It's an artifact, a very interactable type on a permanent, and it's also a creature, an, another also really interactable type on a permanent. Just having a ward on it, though, provides it that protection because you don't want to be the player in an EDH environment spending that mana to then attack that one creature. And that's also something that's highlighted in uh, the video by Gavin Verhey, where he talks about how in a commander in a multiplayer environment, it's really hard being the person who's tends to be maybe most affected by the creature with ward and so you have to be the one spending the most amount of resources sacrificing your creature losing life paying more mana on average to be able to remove these threats and therefore stop your opponent so then in a multiplayer perspective you also then are taxed the most because other players that are maybe farther ahead aren't necessarily as concerned with uh, are concerned with this creature so that has that other effect so again with red you have the multiple mana cost or, or just the increase in cost against that type of color and then also so in a multiplayer environment, just having to be forced to be the one to spend most of those resources. And it comes down to ultimately what the ward number is. Ward one is annoying and actually really powerful, I think, in a constructed environment. I think ward one is the perfect amount. There are human lords that provide ward one to all of their creatures. And I think this is a perfect tuning dial. This uh, card up on the screen right now was played a lot in uh, human variants, still is, especially while Fury was legal, because then every ping of Fury that you have on an individual creature would cost one more mana. So the Fury could be free, but then you're forcing your opponent to play uh pay multiple amounts of mana to be able to destroy them that's a really powerful effect once it starts getting to like ward two ward three it starts to functionally have hex proof and that and that's a big thing as well discussed in the video by gavin verhey around this where you have this functional aspect of ward because the amount of mana that you usually get to in a constructed environment is relatively low so if your removal spells are taking whole turns to cast to remove certain creatures it becomes a real cost investment and you have to really understand if your deck is just able to overcome that effect and if you need to affect it at all think of a card like kappa cannoneer that they didn't really have an intention for it to be really powerful throughout constructed environments but it ended up being absolutely insane and ward four functionally is talked about as having hex proof it's really hard in a world where fatal push path to exile swords to plowshares specifically in legacy swords to plowshares i should mention just being premier removal in that format just not having it cost five to remove a Kappa Cannoneer is absolutely insane. And the fact that Kappa is blue also adds to it from a legacy perspective because it pitches to force of will, force of negation, and other effects uh, similar. So it just has that extra boost being a blue card. So Word 4 is talked about as something that they really want to kind of move away from, which is good to look forward to in future design. And I think it's important to understand that. I, I've mentioned this again two, three times already, but Ward 3 and above, it really feels like it's functionally hexproof. And that's, I think, what they want to avoid. They want to create a tuning dial that still provides players options. And I think in a constructed environment, that Ward 1 is that perfect place. But you don't want to make it like functionally indestructible, functionally untouchable. Because again, in a commander perspective, in a multiplayer perspective, sure, these cards are powerful, but they have more tuning dials because you have different interactions and uh, kind of randomness built in from different players and how you play that out. Sure, you play out of Voha, but maybe by the time you play that out, you didn't get your ramp out and your opponent is kind of farther ahead in that sense. So it's really important to understand it 
from that perspective. And I think ultimately Ward is a net positive thing if implemented properly. It again provides that downside for a, one of the colors. It is weirdly tuned for multiplayer environments. And if they do follow up on their promise and don't go with further directions of Ward 3 and Ward 4, then I think again, the smaller tuning aspects of Ward are really important. The last thing I wanna to touch on is alternate costs for Ward, where you may sacrifice a creature, sacrifice a permanent, pay some life. I think these forms of Ward are actually really powerful. I think these are uh, the future aspects of Ward and great ways to tune it. I I think mana cost is a, it is, should be reserved for a very big punish on a creature that you really need to survive, but maybe on a smaller creature, on a mid-range creature, you may want to force opponents to pay some life. Therefore, it kind of feels like that creature did its damage or it has a sacrifice effect built in. Like you have effects that enter the battlefield and force each player to sacrifice a creature. Maybe you put that sacrifice effect on the ward and therefore if they remove it, then they're functionally doing that effect anyway. So these are the type of tuning knobs that I think are really important. And I'm really excited to see ward in future constructed environments and how they improve this. I think hexproof in general, just having the straight no is kind of important not to have improving on these designs but also if you put it too high or the cost is too steep then it functionally has hex proof and that makes people feel worse like you're, you're you're dangling this carrot in front of them but they can't grab the carrot so in a way that could feel worse than functionally saying no because again like the mana leak example from the beginning of the video you constantly feel back and forth that you could have made a decision to play around that mana leak effect where ultimately if it was just a counter spell you would have just moved on and maybe prioritize your spells differently instead of having to play around it you could have just played one spell instead of the other to force your opponent's hand so you would play differently you'd feel a little bit different and i think from a player perspective feeling is a big thing that ward needs to evoke it, it needs to be a card or an effect that feels good to play against which is kind of hard if it's a protective ability it can be really hard when players aren't able to do proactive things but that's ultimately where the r d team has to design and build things around but let me know what you think in the comment section down below this was kind of my thoughts on ward and just kind of my ideas around you know its effects on it that were talked about in gavin's video and in the pleasant kenobi video but just kind of further elaborating and providing you that summary of you know why i think ward is net positive if defined properly and we see examples of why uh this effect is good can be implemented well and how i think it should be implemented in the future but let me know what you think in the comment section down below about ward about voha about kappa cannoneer and if we're gonna get some insane ward effects uh coming in modern horizons 3 I want to hear about it in the comments section. Let's let's go sound off. I don't know how to end this video. Let's just say bye.